Hello and welcome back to the Spectrosonics Omnisphere tutorial series. Today we're having another deep dive. Uh, look at this preset Dawn over the Amazon One. Let's hear it. So we've got a slow evolving pad. I'm going to increase my mod, mod wheel and get some really lovely stuff. And back down again. Great synth, great sound, and there's some really wonderful Ninja um, Mod Matrix stuff going on in this one. First things first, very quick glance at the main page, nothing exciting to worry about over there. And so we can safely mute layer B, mute the FX channels, and concentrate in on layer A. And this is what we've got. So as you saw in my earlier deep dive video, I like to pull out the sound sources and hear them all on their own. So this is Ebowed Banjo String Insects. This is it. So it's a pretty simple sound, pretty straightforward. It's got that kind of the, the clanging sound in the background and we've also got some um, volume oscillation can you hear that that sort of natural tremolo in the sound that's significant because when we come into the, the mod matrix we'll see that there are um, modulation effects operating on the amplitude but they're layered over the top of this fundamental sample so we need that groundwork we need that fundamental understanding of what the core sound is in order for us to be able to put stuff over the top of it that said, back to our primary sound, which is this one. So we have a nice slow envelope. Here's our attack and release, pretty straightforward stuff. And we've got nothing going on in the filter. It's not engaged. We've also got nothing interesting to look at in the oscillator zoom, everything completely straightforward. And so the actually only interesting place in this preset to look is the mod matrix but it is, there's some great stuff going on in here. So when we first look at it, it can be a little bit confusing. We have to try to figure out, you know, how to approach it. We're obviously ignoring all the gray stuff because that's in layer B, we don't care. And we can also ignore this value down here, graphic 12 band EQ, because that's an FX modulation. Well, the FX units are turned off, so we can't possibly hear that. And so we're left with actually four parameters in this matrix that we want to look at right now. The top three are all linked together because you can see that LFO3 makes an appearance in all of them. So when we're considering that little cluster of um, matrix settings, we're going to need to do them in combination with each other. We can't just isolate one because they're all linked. This value down at the bottom, however, is pretty much standalone. The modulation wheel is having uh, an effect on the amplitude. And my mod wheel's turned down at the moment, but can you see that it's inverted? Which means that when the mod wheel's turned down, the amplitude's gonna be at its highest. And when I turn my mod wheel up, the volume's gonna come down. There's this little, little white dot where my mouse is. Now, the reason why there's not much point me playing a key now, I will, but there's not much point is because there are so many different effects have, um, changing the amplitude of this sound that it's really difficult to actually hear when I increase or decrease the wheel. It's just not having a big enough effect all on its own. The reason it's there is actually to do with layer B. And so we'll just park it for now and we'll come back to it and have a bit more of a chat about it later. What we do want to concentrate on though is the LFO3. What, what's it doing and what, what are these three settings doing in combination with each other? Well, let's start off by the ultimate output. What's the purpose? The purpose is to change the amplitude of the sound. We've got two different effects in the matrix changing the amplitude of the sound. And LFO3 is somehow intrinsically connected with this one. At the other side of the process, we've got the modulation wheel. That's the thing driving the change because you can see it's set to max. So whatever the modulation wheel's doing, it's doing a hell of a lot of it. What it's actually doing 
is changing the depth of LFO3. And it can be a little bit, it's easy to start getting lost at this point with all of these different mentions of LFOs. So what I'm going to do is try to get you grounded back in reality again. And take it from me, it's going to be easier to parse this if we just mute this thing in the middle. Now, what have we got? Modulation wheel all the way down. Modulation wheel all the way up. You hear that tremolo coming in. And it's constant, it's pulsing. That pulse rate is the speed of LFO3. Take the modulation wheel away and that pulse stops, the tremolo stops. So that's what LFO3 is doing. It's applying a tremolo, a change in amplitude to the patch. And how much change it applies to the patch is being controlled by the modulation wheel. So suddenly it's not so daunting. You know, we've dealt with volume controls before. That's, that's not too difficult. The tricky bit comes when we bring the, the middle link back into the equation. Let's turn that back on and I'll do exactly the same thing. Modulation wheel all the way down. Modulation wheel all the way up. I'm going to leave it. Listen to how the tremolo gets faster. And then starts to slow down. And I'm timing my commentary with the LFO4 control. Fast. Slower, 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 slower. Slowest. So this is LFO4, a sine wave. Let's have a look at it. Here it is, operating once every nine seconds, cycling once every nine seconds, so it's really slow. Just moved it, brilliant. Here's LFO3, it's natural period of two and a half hertz, cycling two and a half times a second. So LFO3 is being modulated by LFO4. If LFO3 is the thing that's controlling the tremolo, LFO4 is controlling the speed, the rate of that tremolo. This is quite common in synthesis to see two oscillators interacting in this way. LFO4 is a modulator, and in these terms, LFO3 is called a carrier. It's the thing that's being modulated by an external source, by LFO4. And we get this lovely increase and decrease of speed of the modulation over time. Beautiful. Then when we consider the effect that the modulation wheel is also having on the amplitude, so as this effect um, is increased to maximum, when the modulation wheel is at its limit, there's a little bit of attenuation of the overall volume. It just pulls the level down a little bit. And that said, that is layer A dealt with. Let's jump over to layer B. And we've got Ebode Banjo Evolve. So I've just pulled my modulation wheel all the way down and I've pressed some keys on the keyboard and we're hearing absolutely nothing at all. Shouldn't be that much of a surprise to you because you can see that the amp is turned down all the way to zero. And we can therefore infer that the only way we're going to get any sound out of this thing is to do something with the mod wheel. And now I just turn my mod wheel all the way up to maximum. And if we wait long enough, the sound comes in and then it'll disappear again. So that's what we need to unpick for layer B. I want to hear the Ebode banjo evolve. That's the natural sound. Okay, so that's our foundation. Now that we've got that in our ears and we know what the sound source sounds like, we've got a better chance of understanding 
the layers, the effect layers that are being applied over the top of it to result in this. Now that accordion-esque kind of sound is coming from the harmonia. Let's have a look at that. I'll turn it off and we'll hear the dry sound. It's quite quiet. We'll have to wait for the modulation cycle to come back round again. There it is. And then bring the harmonia in. And it's going to bring two um, higher octaves in, plus 12 and plus 24. And plus 19 is a perfect fifth. So it's going to add that lovely little um, perfect fifth colour. Again, wait for the modulation cycle to come around. The amplitude increases. And that's our sound. Over on the mod matrix, we can see that the harmonia mix, the amount of that um, harmonia mix is actually being influenced by yet another LFO. This is LFO2. And this is another slow one. Again, once every nine seconds, this thing is doing its business. And what it's doing is increasing and decreasing the amount of harmonia mix in the sound. So if you track this little white light when I press a chord, there's the harmonia at its maximum, brightest kind of accordion sound, and there's it at its dullest. And having done that, I'm going to turn it off. I want to concentrate on the other effects and it's such a dominant sound, it's such a dominant presence in the layer, it's really difficult to parse anything else with it there. Throw it away. Now if I toggle quickly between layers A and B, you can kind of, a little bit like those um, kind of trick of the eye pictures, you can see which settings never change. LFO4 to LFO3 rate never changes and wheel to LFO3 depth never changes either. So those two settings are common to the two layers. They're affecting both layers equally. But what's, what's different between them is the other settings, particularly for LFO3, this is significant because LFO3 amplitude is being set down here for layer B, whereas it's the first matrix option for layer A. And this is where the inversion comes in because those two <laughs> those two effects are opposite each other. The LFO4, the thing that's controlling the rate of change, is consistent between the two. So we always get the same rate of change, just in you know, the opposite directions. So we shouldn't need to parse the entire logic train again. It's exactly the same principle, just the other way around. But we can hear the LFO gets slower and slower and slower, and then it's going to get faster and faster and faster. Here it comes, reach its maximum speed there, and start coming down again. So I'm watching this control, the LFO 3 being modulated by LFO 4. What else have we got? We've got some pan got some lovely pan settings going on and it's absolutely maximal going all the way left and right as much as it possibly can to hear that and to help us get rid of some of the the fluff now that we've dealt with the um the tremolo effect what i'm actually going to do is mute all of this and artificially give us some volume so now hopefully it should be a little bit easier to catch lfo5 Yet another sine wave operating at, what's that? My six times table's pretty ropey, but that's about right, isn't it? It's about six, once every six seconds at, at 0.18. That's throwing the pan of this sound hard right and hard left. And you can see it in the output over here as well. And finally, we've got this random one. Uh, we saw when we dealt with the modulation settings, we have some random options, literally just generates a random control voltage each time, output signal. And that's being mapped into sample timbre. So this is this thing. 
it's set to shift, which basically means as the uh, sample mappings are decreased, they're offset to the pitch of the keyboard that's played, and you end up with quite dramatically um, different timbre shifts. What it actually results in, sonically, is when the timbre shift is over to the right, you're going to get a brighter, almost trumpet-like effect. I accentuate the sound as much as possible. It's almost like a formant effect. That's qu quite significantly brighter than that one. So it's a really nice way to alter the timbre of the shape by randomizing the sample timbre. And that's layer B dealt with. Let's uh, reload the sound and have a quick look at the effects. Left to right, as we always do, nothing in the auxiliary racks. And um, we should remember or um, recognize the graphic EQ 12. This is the thing that's being modulated inside layer A. So I'll just mute layer, uh, layer B again momentarily so that we can have a look at this value here. I just increase the amount, accentuate it a little bit. So what it's doing is basically boosting or attenuating the frequency of this um, layer at or around 630 hertz. Now I've got a, I've just set up Hallion with a 630 hertz tone so we can hear it. There we go, that's what 630 sounds like. So that's the frequency around which this effect is being applied. And what it's going to do, watch this, louder, or more accentuated, and then it pulls those mid frequencies down and back up again. Now I've accentuated this to emphasize it, but that's basically what it's doing. It's more subtle than this. Reload the sound again. So that's the graphic EQ, and you can see visually that this is being modulated, just wonderful. Layer B has a reverb, and it's not the only reverb, because there's one on the common bus as well. So layer B gets basically two doses of reverb. And the only way we're going to hear this is if we pull the release all the way down. So that's the combined effect. Well, both layers are in operation there and we're hearing two reverbs. We just focus on layer B for a moment. There's the two reverbs. It's really just a, a thickening of the effect because we take one away. The common reverb is pretty thick, but it just gets that extra little oomph from the dedicated one on the layer B um, slot. And that's this one done. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you found it useful. And if you did, please consider subscribing, hit notifications. I'll catch you for the next one. Thanks very much.